This is not your wet panda. Why is oil, a finite fossil fuel, seemingly becoming more abundant? How did it go from being nearly ignored to becoming the indispensable energy giant we rely on today? Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Red Panda, and today, let's explore the history of oil. How is oil formed? In 1956, American geologist Marion King Hubbard proposed the theory of peak oil. He predicted that the United States oil production would reach its peak around 1970, after which it would gradually decline. Hubbard believed that oil was formed from the remains of ancient organisms, such as dinosaurs, trilobites, and ferns, whose fossils underwent high temperature and pressure deep underground, gradually accumulating and forming oil. Therefore, he argued that oil is a finite resource. This theory has been highly controversial, but it was eventually included in textbooks, and it's the same one we encountered in our childhood. The idea that oil will run out in 50 years. The controversy surrounding the biogenic oil theory stems from two main points. First, there is no scientific evidence to support it, as the process of transforming plant and animal remains into oil cannot be replicated. Secondly, oil can be found in many geological layers that do not contain any biological material. In fact, most biological remains are recycled by microorganisms, fungi, and bacteria, with very few being buried. As a result, another theory emerged, the abiogenic theory. This theory argues that oil is unrelated to biological remains and is instead a mineral formed from chemical reactions involving materials from the Earth's interior. This would make oil a less finite resource, as these materials have existed since the early formation of the Earth. Therefore, deeper oil wells could potentially yield more oil. However, the abiogenic theory also has its problems and few people support it. According to this theory, the deeper into the Earth's crust you go, the more oil you should find, but this contradicts the actual findings and it fails to explain the complex chemical composition and characteristics of oil. In short, these two theories have been debated for over 100 years and many contradictions remain. The origin of oil is still a mystery today. The history of human use of petroleum. Regardless of which theory is correct, humans discovered oil a long time ago. In fact, the real development of the oil industry began in the mid-19th century, and the large-scale use of oil as an important energy source has only been in the past 100 years or so. But why was it like this? Humans were aware of the existence of oil as early as 5,000 years ago. At that time, oil seeped to the surface from underground oil reservoirs through cracks, forming tar pits. This was the method through which humans could directly access and use it. The sticky substance, known as tar or bitumen, was useful for fixing stone tools and wooden handles. In addition to its strong adhesive properties, bitumen also had excellent waterproof qualities, was widely available, and highly durable. Both the Chinese and the Babylonians used bitumen to coat buildings and ships to prevent water seepage and protect against seawater erosion. It is said that Noah's Ark, as described in the Bible, was coated with bitumen both inside and out. In addition, Petroleum was not only used as a waterproof adhesive, but also as a weapon. One famous example is the Greek fire of the Byzantine Empire, a type of flame that could burn on water. Thanks to the Greek fire, the Byzantine Empire successfully defended itself against enemy invasions multiple times, making it a secret weapon that lasted for centuries. However, petroleum was not always as highly sought after as it is today. Despite its significant role in various historical periods, people did not fight wars over oil as they do now. The reason oil has become so valuable is that it has become an essential source of power. Oil, the source of power. Throughout human history, the conversion of energy has been a significant challenge. In the early days, people used fire for cooking and metalworking, wind to propel sailing ships, and water to power mills. However, these methods all had their limitations. For example, fire required wood, wind depended on weather conditions, and water power required a steady water source. Moreover, these forms of energy couldn't be converted into each other. Wind could move ships but couldn't cook food, 
while fire could cook but couldn't drive mills or ships. To achieve energy conversion, human or animal power was necessary. However, both humans and animals needed to be well-fed before they could convert energy into motion. This problem was effectively solved only with the invention of the steam engine. Simply put, the steam engine works by burning fuel, such as coal, to generate heat, which boils water to produce steam. The steam pushes a piston, causing it to move back and forth, thus converting thermal energy into mechanical energy. The earliest steam engines were invented to pump water from mines, powered by human labor, but their efficiency was low. Later, steam engines were applied to other fields, such as textile machines, and their widespread use led to the creation of the revolutionary steam train. Compared to traditional horse-drawn carts, steam trains were faster, had a higher cargo capacity, and were more cost-effective. As a result, the steam engine spurred the industrial revolution and technological advancements. Since then, humanity has become increasingly obsessed with researching ways to convert various types of energy using machines and engines. In 1846, Canadian inventor Abraham Gessner developed a method to extract kerosene from coal. Not long after, in 1852, Ignacy Lukasiewicz from Prussia invented a simpler method to extract kerosene from petroleum. In the past, humans relied on essential oils or candles for lighting, both of which were expensive and inefficient. But kerosene was different. It provided better lighting, was portable, and inexpensive. As a result, oil became increasingly important and gradually became an indispensable part of human society. With the advancement of extraction technology, modern refineries and the first modern oil well were established during this period. The demand for and production of oil surged, leading to the booming development of the oil industry, with many oil companies being founded. However, during this time, oil was primarily used to refine kerosene for fuel. In fact, the steam engine was the dominant power source in the industrial systems of the time. Despite its widespread use, the steam engine was inefficient, as its fuel burned outside the cylinder, causing energy to dissipate easily. To solve this problem, in 1876, German thermodynamicist Otto invented the internal combustion engine, which burns fuel, such as kerosene, directly inside the cylinder. Compared to the steam engine, the internal combustion engine was more compact, more powerful, and didn't require preheating or cooling, making it more suitable for modern industrial and transportation needs. The invention of the internal combustion engine marked the end of the steam engine era and laid the foundation for the rapid development of the modern automobile, aviation, and machinery industries. However, kerosene had a relatively low energy density and a large volume, requiring significant fuel storage space, which made early internal combustion engines using kerosene inefficient and prevented them from becoming widely popular. Nevertheless, with advancements in refining technology and chemical knowledge, scientists successfully extracted diesel and gasoline from oil. Compared to kerosene, diesel and gasoline have higher flash points, burn faster, and can output more energy. In 1885, Daimler, the founder of Mercedes-Benz, invented the internal combustion engine fueled by gasoline. The invention of the internal combustion engine, along with the advent of electricity, helped drive the second industrial revolution. Human technology advanced rapidly and gasoline-powered internal combustion engines, with their small size and high efficiency, revolutionized transportation. Cars, motorcycles, boats, and flying machines powered by gasoline became widespread, and with the emergence of electricity, the demand for oil surged. This shift led to oil surpassing coal to become the new king of energy. Oil not only fueled the Industrial Revolution, but also had a profound impact on global politics and the economy. For example, after World War I, the Soviet Red Army occupied Azerbaijan and took control of the Baku oil fields, supplying 90% of the Soviet Union's oil needs. During World War II, Hitler launched the Battle of Stalingrad, primarily to seize the Baku oil fields. However, the defeat in the war ultimately led to the collapse of the Third Reich the oil prices that shake the world. During the Cold War, especially in the 1970s, the Soviet Union's economy faced serious problems. However, the 1973 oil crisis temporarily eased these issues, 
as oil wealth helped boost the Soviet economy, even giving it the strength to compete with the United States. Yet, in 1981, after President Reagan took office, a series of policy maneuvers led to a dramatic drop in international oil prices, with prices falling as low as $8 per barrel. This was a devastating blow to the oil-dependent Soviet Union and indirectly contributed to its eventual collapse. After World War II, the global economy began to recover, and the development of the chemical industry meant that oil was no longer just a fuel. It was now used to produce plastics, synthetic fibers, medical products, cosmetics, and more. Oil became the lifeblood of modern industry. With the explosive growth of the population and the acceleration of urbanization, oil became increasingly indispensable to daily life. Approximately half of the world's oil is concentrated in the Middle East. Although Middle Eastern countries had vast oil reserves after World War II, oil extraction did not begin immediately due to a lack of technology. The technology and equipment for oil extraction were primarily controlled by European countries, leading to a near monopoly on oil extraction by European countries and United States. These companies became known as the Seven Sisters, which dominated the global oil market. At its peak in the 1970s, the Seven Sisters controlled 85% of the world's oil reserves. However, as the wealth of Middle Eastern countries grew, they began to believe they had gained enough technological expertise and influence to no longer be controlled by external powers. In 1960, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, was founded under the leadership of Saudi Arabia, with the aim of coordinating oil production among its member countries, unifying oil prices, and protecting the interests of its members. With the rise of OPEC, the monopoly of the Seven Sisters gradually came under challenge. In 1973, the Fourth Middle East War broke out, leading to intense conflict between Israel and Arab nations. The United States decided to support Israel while OPEC, unhappy with the stance of Western countries, decided to retaliate by halting oil exports to those countries that supported Israel. This move caused oil prices to soar, plunging the global economy into a state of collapse. This became known as the famous 1973 oil crisis. In the aftermath of the crisis, many scholars predicted that oil resources would be exhausted within 30 to 50 years. However, 50 years have passed, and oil is still abundant, with new methods of resource extraction emerging. From an economic perspective, oil is not inexhaustible. As supplies decrease, prices rise. When oil prices reach a certain level, consumers and businesses begin to seek alternatives or explore oil fields that were previously too expensive to develop. For instance, before 2005, oil prices remained between $20 and $40 per barrel, a price that was very low relative to the extraction costs in the Middle East. The cost of extracting a barrel of oil was less than $10 and daily production reached as high as 10 million barrels. However, when oil prices skyrocketed to $147 per barrel in 2008, the oil wealth of Arab nations surged once again. High oil prices spurred the development of new technologies, allowing the United States to enter the shale oil market. Extracting shale oil requires complex technologies and costs between $40 and $60 per barrel. The previous oil price range of $20 to $40 made shale oil extraction unprofitable, but the higher prices made it economically viable. Additionally, Canada's oil sands represent another form of non-traditional oil, which is more challenging to extract, with costs ranging from $40 to $90 per barrel. However, as oil prices increased, extracting oil from oil sands gradually became more profitable the technological revolution driven by high oil prices. Although oil prices may fluctuate, technological advancements have made previously unprofitable, high-cost oil resources increasingly feasible. For example, deep-sea oil and oil from low permeability reservoirs, which are buried in deep oceans and permafrost, are expensive and difficult to extract, yet their potential reserves are enormous. As extraction technologies continue to improve, these high-cost resources are gradually becoming accessible sources of energy. Furthermore, with the advancement of new energy technologies, alternative energy sources like electric vehicles are gaining popularity, thereby reducing the demand for oil. Electric vehicles are not a new technology of the 21st century. 
In fact, they predate gasoline cars. In the late 19th to early 20th century, electric vehicles, gasoline cars, steam cars, and horse-drawn carriages coexisted for a period. However, by 1910, steam engines were phased out, and five years later, electric cars could not compete with gasoline cars and were ultimately abandoned. Since then, gasoline vehicles have dominated the market, a trend that continues to this day. In conclusion, the future of oil is far from certain, as it is influenced by technological progress and shifts in the energy market. As new energy technologies evolve, the idea of oil being inexhaustible seems increasingly idealistic. In the future, more and more alternative energy sources may reshape the way humanity sources its energy. And that's a wrap for this episode of the video. I'm Dr. Red Panda. If any of you have your own perspectives or if you think there are any errors in the video, feel free to leave a comment in the discussion section. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, take care.